We all know Pee Wee Herman as the host of his own children's show, surrounded by talking furniture and pets, but not much is known about the man who plays Pee Wee, Paul Rubenfield, or Paul Rubens as he is known professionally. Throughout his career, Rubens has had a few brushes with the law that's nearly cost him his reputation. Accusations of having custody of child pornography and marijuana, masturbating in an adult movie theater, as well as loitering have followed Rubens, most of which has played out in the public eye. In a day and age where cancel culture reigns supreme, it's rare to see a celebrity escape public shame, embarrassment, and consequences on more than one occasion. This is another Comedic Crime Files, the story of Pee Wee Herman. Born in Peekskill, New York, but raised in Sarasota, Florida, young Rubenfield gained an interest in entertainment after becoming a frequent visitor of the Ringling Bros and Barnum and & Bailey Circus. After appearing in a few plays in high school, Rubenfield attended Boston University while auditioning for acting schools. After being rejected by a few, Rubenfield was eventually accepted by the California Institute of the Arts, moved cross-country, and started performing stand-up comedy and joined an improvisational comedy team called The Groundlings 2. The character of Pee Wee Herman came about during Rubens' time at the Groundlings. The idea came from a man who wanted to be a comedian, but was so awful at telling jokes, it's clear that he's never going to make it. After spending some time crafting the character, Rubens auditioned for Saturday Night Live in 1980, the same season Eddie Murphy made his debut. But lost out to Gilbert Gottfried, disappointed, Rubens decided to start his own show starring his character, Pee Wee Herman. The Pee Wee Herman Show made its debut as a stage show at the Groundlings Theater in 1981 and eventually made its way to the Roxy Theater in West Hollywood, where the show sold out for five straight months. Rubens would perform midnight shows for adults and weekly matinees for kids. Soon the show aired on HBO part of the series On Location, which brought Rubens and Pee Wee to the mainstream. It wasn't long before Pee Wee appeared in the Cheech and Chong films, Cheech and Chong's next movie in Nice Dreams. In addition to this, he made several guest appearances on Late Night with David Letterman, which helped increase his popularity. At this point, Rubens began to move away from the spotlight, only making appearances as Pee Wee while the credits would always reveal that Pee Wee was playing himself. Pee Wee's fame continued to grow. His popularity resulted in the 1985 film, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Made on a $7 million budget, the film made $40 million, along with positive reviews. The following year, Pee Wee's Playhouse made his debut on CBS on Saturday mornings and ran for five seasons. After five years of playing the character, Rubens suffered burnout from playing Pee Wee and declined the option for a sixth season, deciding to take a sabbatical instead. After the final season of Pee Wee's Playhouse, Rubens kept a relatively low profile. However, just eight months after the series ended, he was back in the news again. This time, it would have nothing to do with Pee Wee Herman, but Paul Rubens himself became the focus. On July 26, 1991, Rubens was arrested for indecent exposure in Sarasota, Florida, when detectives found him masturbating to a film by the name of Naughty Nurses or Nancy Nurse, depending on the source. When Rubens was arrested, the mugshot shows him with a long goatee and long black hair, looking nothing like his childlike persona. When Rubens appeared in court, he was described as clean-shaven and his black hair was cut short well scrubbed and innocent as the character who lived in the zany playhouse, the Seattle Times. According to Entertainment Weekly, three detectives entered the XXX South Trail Cinema to watch the audience. That night, three men were arrested on charges of exposing sexual organs. Detective William Waters allegedly saw a man masturbate in the dark theater at 8.25 p.m. and again at 8.35 p.m. Rubens was arrested upon leaving and according to the police, he offered to perform a children's benefit as Pee Wee Herman for the sheriff's office if the charges were dropped. Days later, Rubens released a statement denying he exposed himself in any way. Judge Judy Goldman sentenced Rubens to pay a $50 fine with other sources paying $75 including court fees. He was also made to produce and pay for a nationally distributed anti-drug spot. The spot would fulfill a 75-hour community service requirement. What's even more interesting is that it would later be revealed this wasn't the first time Rubens had been arrested. The first time being back in 1971, when he was arrested for loitering and prowling near an adult movie theater. The second time in 1983, where he was placed on two years probation for possession of marijuana, according to the Seattle Times. As a result of the 1991 arrest, the show was removed from syndication, action figures were pulled from shelves, among other deals being taken away. 
multiple celebrities came to the defense of Rubens. But of course, because the universe is the ultimate comedian, in 1991, Oprah Winfrey asked Bill Cosby in a one-on-one -on -one interview, what should parents tell their children about why Pee Wee Herman would no longer appear on television screens? I don't know what parents should say. I just know that with Pee Wee, the press, the media saw a chance to sell newspapers. I mean, we're talking about human beings and we're talking about people learning to better themselves and to live together. Obviously, whatever happened, it wasn't necessary to blow this whole thing up to sell the papers. Rubens kept quiet and built back his career with various movies and TV roles that did not involve the Pee Wee character. He took part in films such as Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Matilda, and Dunson Checks In. Rubens also worked with frequent collaborator Tim Burton, once on Batman Returns as the Penguin's father and the second time in The Nightmare Before Christmas as Locke, one of the trick-or-treaters. Television roles included a reoccurring role on Murphy Brown, which he won an Emmy nomination for in an NBC pilot entitled Meet the Muckles, which did not get picked up. It was ultimately his roles in Mystery Men, a 1999 superhero comedy movie where he starred alongside stars like Kel Mitchell and Ben Stiller, and Below, a movie in which he played a flamboyant hairdresser where he starred alongside Penelope Cruz and Johnny Depp, that Hollywood and the media began to slowly embrace him once more. In November 2002, while filming a video for Elton John, police entered Ruben's home with a search warrant after they were acting on a tip from a witness in the pornography case against actor Jeffrey Jones. Jones was arrested the same year for possession of child pornography after a 17-year-old accused Jones of soliciting him for nude photos. Police found videos and photographs that were considered child pornography in Ruben's home. Rubens turned himself into the LAPD and was charged with possession of obscene material improperly depicting a child under the age of 18 in sexual content, a claim Ruben still denies. One thing I want to make very, very clear. I don't want anyone for one second to think that I am titillated by images of children. It's not me. You can say lots of things about me, and you might. The public may think I'm weird. They may think I'm craft or anything that anyone wants to think about me. That's all fine, as long as one of the things you're not thinking about me is that I'm a pedophile, because that's not true. Paul Rubens, 2004, NBC News. Rubens was required to register his address with the sheriff's office and was not allowed to be in the company of minors without the permission of a parent or legal guardian. Rubens' defense was that he was a fan of erotica and has a collection that includes films and magazines. According to Rubens, what the city attorney's office considers pornography, he thinks of as an innocent art. What they thought was underage people masturbating, Rubin says was a judgmental point of view and they were definitely not performing sex acts. In December of that year, Rubens pled not guilty and by March 2004, the charges were dropped in exchange for Rubens' guilty plea to a misdemeanor. A few years had passed and it seemed as if Rubens retired as Pee Wee Herman character. Rubens made guest appearances in Reno 911, 30 Rock, and an assortment of other animated sitcoms and television shows. Rubens brought Pee Wee out of retirement in 2009 after an interview on The Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien. Since the resurgence of Pee Wee Herman, rumors of a potential film surrounding the character began to surface. Rubens had written a couple scripts, but they wouldn't enter production until Judd Apatow had signed on to produce. Pee Wee's Big Holiday was released in March 2016 on Netflix to positive reviews. Rubens went on a press run as Pee Wee to promote the project. As Rubens was on his press run, it was clear that the audience had quickly forgotten about his arrest decades earlier. Four incidents with law enforcement ultimately did not cost Paul Rubenfield any of his career. The magnetism that Pee Wee had with America and the unequal distribution of law in the United States allows Paul Rubenfield to continue playing with Pee Wee in front of audiences. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel, follow Comedy Hype across all social media, and look out for content on our new streaming service at ComedyHype.com. For Comedy Hype news, as always, I'm Elena Williams.